Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to my next free tutorial Friday. I'm a little bit refreshed today, which feels nice. I spent a week off, first week off this year, and um, it was good. I gotta say, it was uh, quite the uh, foreign feeling, but um, excited to get back to the studio now. Um, I had a request oh, a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this was a background image off my Facebook page, also from uh, the book Blast that I did uh, with Danny Gardner and Anise Naeem and a couple of guest artists. We put out, a, I guess, about a year and a half ago now, or a little over a year ago. Anyway, um, somebody on my Facebook page had requested to see how this image was built. So uh, this week's free tutorial Friday is going to be uh, another kind of post-mortem, have a look at a finished image, break it down and show how it was built. And then there's a couple of different backgrounds you'll see as I go through the layers. But um, this is more of a composite um, than it is really a painting. It's got a lot of 3D elements and a lot of photography elements and then just a little bit of blending of those pieces together. So let's get to it. I put a layer up here on top just to write some notes maybe. Um, maybe I won't, but we'll see. So let's, uh, let's see if I can remember which ones. Let's see. Number five is off, and one is off, and eight. Okay, I still want to leave those and show you what they are, um, but I'm going to go all the way back down. Okay, so that's how it started. Actually, this started uh, as a photograph, one of my wallscape photographs um, up in Toronto. This was a building, and these were signs and things, and I thought that looked like a cool um, environment, and I sort of saw this as a roadway over here, and then you know, a vertical wall, and maybe a person. I always thought of a person kind of as that that kind of scale. Um, and then I don't know what, what this is. This could be water down here. Uh, it could be more cement. It could be snow. Um, so there, you could, you know, when you have a an early image like this, it sort of stimulates all sorts of ideas. But I like that. Um, so I took a crop of the photograph. And I like that general composition with my focal point. It was going to be over here, set sort of again using rule of thirds so I kind of knew that right right in through here was going to be where I wanted to put the center of interest so let's see how I can do this let's just do that I'll keep writing notes there so that's how it started with a photograph and then I started into that photograph and started to um, put in some atmosphere in the distance and push basically planes, um, basically adding um, atmospheric perspective or aerial perspective by adding haze and mist off in the distance. And then that allowed for this part um, through here to be way in the background right? by adding that. So I just started to push and pull on those planes by adding more or less atmosphere, trying to get them to separate a bit to add more depth and make it not look like it was a photograph of a detail of a building and more like it could be an environment um, by itself. So there's another big pass of atmosphere. Let me just keep going back to this and deleting out notes as I go. All right. And then I was playing around in Modo with some environments and I was like, oh, maybe I should do something completely different. So I dropped this into here. And this is a like, you know, pseudo sci-fi cityscape or the start of one. It has a ground plane. Um, I sort of put the ground plane in the similar location. <laughs> and um, all this is just straight out of moto, including the atmosphere. Uh, and these are actually car parts from various wheel models and things from uh, the book Drive. So from one of those vehicles, I took the parts and then just turned them into cities or into buildings, I should say. And ultimately, I decided not to do that. And so back to this one. So you see now I've flattened it. Um, so this guy here is just a combination, right, of all the layers below. So I could I could leave that one off. It doesn't matter. So when I do that, um, if I want to take a snapshot, I usually just do uh, Command A to select everything, Command Shift C to copy. A snapshot of all the layers below and then command shift V to place it exactly on top so now I have a snapshot right 
I have a snapshot of everything below that's been merged. And so it allows me, if I wanted to go back to the original layers, I could go back and still modify things. Um, but if I want to start painting on top with just one flat layer, that's a good way to do it. So Command Shift C is copy merged. Um, and so it just looks at all the layers below the position you have in your stack, your layer stack, and merges all those together. Okay, so you can see here I dropped in a very different environment. So this is um, actually from this model, but you can see I uh, had a very different color palette, so the two blend together. But I'm keeping parts of the photograph down below, and then I'm going to, you see I have a layer mask here. This is the straight render out of Moto. Um, I probably just turned down the saturation. It's probably that same other model, but a brighter sky. So it's kind of this hazy, you know, overcast sky a little bit. And so had, these were the shapes that were generated, and it's just total happy accidents. But I am still using, you know, an eye towards the composition that I originally found in the photograph that inspired it. And so here I've added a layer mask. So I wanted some foreground elements. Um, and so I just took and painted on a layer mask to drop this beam in front of that building. And also here to elevate that back up in front of that wall. So trying to get some separation. It's a very, very long lens. Um, so there's not a lot of convergence. And so it's really important to try and get all those layers to stack. And you have to just manipulate the uh, atmosphere to make that happen. So here I'm adding atmosphere. And the way I do that is, I see there's my layer mask. So big soft airbrush. And so a lot of haze off in the distance. And then if I want to bring that top of the wall back and make it nice and sharp, you know, you just add a layer mask and I can clean up those edges. And that provides the separation to the background. You see without it, right, this element here connects itself to the background. But as soon as I add the atmosphere to separate, that's all it takes. Um, so I've got that wall, I have a, you know, some architecture way in the distance, um, sort of a mid-ground building, a mid-ground wall. This is like a big architectural element, a pillar hanging down maybe, and then this uh, another, then a, a flat horizontal surface where I'm going to put my vehicle. And then I have a little wall here and then a, a big ground plane in the front. So originally when I was doing this, um, I was just playing around with different vehicles as a starting point. And this was for the book Blast, so I knew it had to be a spaceship, but I was playing around with the scale. And could I take this, this is also a base model that I did in Moto. Could I take that and then just paint over the top, get rid of the wheels and turn that into a ship? So that was kind of one of the ideas was to start just composing. Um, and then setting up my layers and then do a paint over. But I abandoned that and I did this instead. So uh, this ship was also done in Moto and I brought it over and it looks like it has, I think it's just a painted shadow underneath it. And I just made a uh, alpha mask and pulled the ship out of the background and then painted in the shadow. Okay, not sure what's on that layer. Looks like not much of anything. Let's see. Oh, it's super tiny. Some some little detail there. Probably a little. Yeah, it's probably just a little highlight. Bing, on that guy on the canopy and on the the pilot's head there. So I just painted that into Photoshop. So obviously this is getting a little bit more light than what's happening in the distance there. So there could be a hole in the clouds, um, letting a little bit more light through. <clears throat> okay, this is a. I thought that, oh, this could be maybe early morning. Well, not with that lighting there, but regardless, I thought this could be steam rolling out of here um, off of the scrambling, or it could be dust blowing through. And so I painted that in. Mostly I painted that in because I didn't want to have to go and render this edge as photoreal as the model gave me. I didn't want to have to go back and deal with that. So this is actually a way to hide that, right, and to sort of blend this mid-ground into the foreground. Okay, the last element, um, I thought, oh, it's, I mean, it looks very flat. It doesn't have a lot of dimension. There's a little dimension between this wall and the ship 
plane, and then there's that wall behind the ship, and then there's that mid-ground building and a background building, which is kind of good, but all the depth kind of starts right at the mid-ground where I have my focal point, and I don't really have any any foreground elements. And so then instead of using more 3D elements, I decided I would use some photography. So I went out, um, also in Toronto at the time, and I shot some uh, pillars and, you know, girders and things, and I, I don't think these were vertical. It was probably horizontal or above my head, and I shot them, and then I just manipulated them in Photoshop to make them a big vertical foreground element. And I wanted something that would frame the vehicle, and so I did that. And then I started to think about, what about the depth of field? And so depth of field is when you um, set the depth that your camera is going to be in focus. And so um, I set the depth to imaginary depth to my vehicle, so it will be in focus. And technically then my background should also get a little blurry, but I'm sort of a cheat here, so I just added the depth of field blur to the foreground element. So kind of everything behind this pillar in the distance is in focus, and then everything in the foreground is blurry. So all I did there was just add a blur, Gaussian blur, to that sharp photograph, and that's what I got. And that was kind of the last element. And let's see what this one is. Oh yeah, and a little bit of haze. So imagine that this pillar is going down and eventually connecting to this ground plane. There might also be more of that here in the foreground. So um, to also soften the contrast here, where the haze is behind it, I added a little bit more foreground haze like that, just to soften it back. And um, that was the final image um, in the book. So I hope you enjoyed that, and um, tune in next week for another free tutorial Friday. Bye-bye.